Uh, welcome to another IT Cold Site tutorial video. Uh, this is a companion uh, tutorial for the IT Cold Site uh, posting how to test an operating system without wrecking your own computer. Uh, this article on my blog, itcoldsite.co.uk or .com, uh, goes through the process of setting up virtual PC. Um, which you can use to run a virtual operating system and also downloading a uh, legal and free copy of an operating system f to test out. Um, uh, both program virtual box and the operating system are free and it's all legal to do. So that's the blog post and so this video just goes through a few extra things with it. So, uh, we've installed virtual box uh, which is by Oracle and it's uh, basically a program that's used uh, as a framework to run a virtual computer from. Uh, so once you've installed VirtualBox for the first time, this is the uh, file you'll see. And to create our new virtual computer, we click New. Now what we're doing first is basically creating the hardware for our virtual computer to run off of. Um, so first of all, we just give the computer a name, so anything you fancy. Uh, then we select the type of computer. Now, if we see from the drop down menu that you've got more options than just a Microsoft computer, uh, but we're going to go with Microsoft Windows. And then you can select the version that you want to install. And for Microsoft Windows, we've got everything from 3.1 all the way through to uh, Windows 2012, which is the latest uh, server uh, operating system available. Uh, you select the most appropriate option. Uh, available, so we're going to install a copy of uh, Windows 8, that's going to be our virtual computer, so we'll select that. Click Next. Now we have to assign an amount of memory or RAM uh, to the uh, virtual computer. Uh, the total amount of RAM available to you is the total amount installed in the physical computer that you're running VirtualBox on. Uh, bear in mind as well that the slider goes from green through to red. Uh, the further you get into the red zone, the more likely it is your computer will experience a crash uh, because there won't be enough memory to run both the physical computer and the virtual computer at the same time. So everything will grind to a halt and you'll probably get a blue screen error. Um, the only other thing to bear in mind uh, is that you need to assign enough memory to the virtual computer um, to allow it to run. So you can't assign less RAM to the virtual computer uh, than is specified in the minimum system requirements for that virtual computer. Um, so for Windows 8 that we're going to install, uh, you need about 2 gigabytes of RAM, as it states that it's recommended. Uh, so that's what we'll set our slider to. And just click Next. And now we have to create a virtual hard drive for our computer. So we want to create a virtual hard drive option, which is automatically selected when you're creating a new computer. And you click Create. Uh, we get a type of hard drive file type. I always go with a virtual hard disk, with HD. Uh, we get an option on selecting a dynamically allocated or fixed size virtual hard drive. Fixed size just means if you select a 60 gigabyte hard drive, you'll get a 60 gigabyte hard drive. However, when it's dynamically allocated, uh, your computer will increase the size of the hard drive as is needed. Uh, now we assign the amount of space we want for our virtual hard drive. Um, again, you're limited to the amount of hard drive space available on your physical hard drives. Uh, you also need to bear in mind the minimum amount of hard drive space required to install the operating system which you're going to run. Uh, and above that you may need more hard drive space uh, if you're then going to install extra applications into that virtual uh, computer. I usually go for about 60 gigabytes ish free hard drive space, more than enough to install any operating system and add in extra things on top of that. And once you've done that, just click Create. And that's your new virtual computer's hardware set up. We can alter it a little bit if we want to configure it specifically for our needs. We just click on the settings. And if you go to the system tab first of all, you can again alter the amount of memory. You can alter the boot order uh, that your computer will boot in. This is like going into your BIOS on your computer and altering the boot order in there. So we can move the hard drive up 
and the hard disk up to the first and the second boot options. If you don't want it to uh, check floppy drives, you can unclick it. And if you're doing a network uh, Pixie installation, uh, you could also select the network option, but we'll leave that unchecked. Uh, you can also display settings, storage settings. Uh, perhaps you want a computer running multiple hard drives, or you want to try setting up a, a RAID system. Then you can add in here extra hard drives. Also, audio settings. You can alter network settings. Uh, if you're setting up a network, uh, you can use VirtualBox to create an entire virtual network so you could have multiple servers and clients running all at the same time. Uh, you'd want to add in extra network adapters uh, and also maybe set them as internal network adapters, bridge adapters, or generic drivers, things. Uh, don't worry about that too much. If you're just testing one operating system, you can leave it set on the default. Uh, you can add in serial ports and USB ports uh, to the virtual computer. So, for instance, if you want to have your virtual computer uh, print documents to a physical printer attached to your real PC, uh, you just click on the plus sign and you can attach any USB device that's attached to your physical computer. Shared folders is quite useful. Uh, if you want your virtual computer to have access to a folder or file on your physical computer, just click on the icon and you select the folder path for uh, the folder or file that you want access to and then your virtual computer will have access to that virtual file. Um, you can have your virtual computer edit the file or you can select read only and if you select auto mount it will automatically mount that folder for you as well. we've assigned uh, the settings that we want for our particular virtual computer, just click OK. And now we're ready to actually install the operating system onto our virtual hardware. A click Start. And we get the first run box pop up. Now, we can install the operating system in a number of ways. If you have a physical uh, DVD copy of the installation media for the operating system, you select your host drive, which is probably D by default, pop in the media into your physical computer and click start and install from there. But you can also use an ISO image of the installation DVD to install from, which is what we're going to do. Click on the folder option. And here we see uh, several ISOs which are just basically uh, image files uh, that work exactly the same way as a physical DVD. Select the appropriate one for the operating system that you're installing. Click open. And now when we click start, it will read that ISO file just like it was a DVD. And we click start again. Uh, from this point on, installing your operating system is exactly the same as if you were doing it on a virtual computer. So here we see the Windows 8, and it was consumer preview version, uh, starting its installation process. Uh, the beautiful thing about installing an operating system in a virtual environment such as this is that you can play around with it. You can change settings, run programs, add in options, and if it breaks, it breaks and it doesn't matter because it won't hurt your physical computer. If you don't like it, you don't have to try and find a way to roll back to your old system settings, which isn't always possible. At the end of the day, if you just click on the X, power off the machine, right click and click remove and it will delete the entire virtual computer and it's gone and you're just left with your original operating system running and your no worse for wear. So that's the best way I think to test a new operating system. So when Microsoft releases Windows 9 or whatever comes next and you want to try it out, try it out inside VirtualBox and you won't end up harming your computer.